This video takes a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Acer Z35. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the bottom bezel towards the right side. You can see that the last one there actually has a um, illuminated power LED which glows blue when the monitor is on and goes amber when it's on standby. If you press any of these buttons brings up a little quick menu here and the first button there if you press that again you can access G which is the game mode of the monitor and this doesn't really provide any um, enhancements over the normal operation it doesn't change the responsiveness of the monitor or anything like that is it changes the quick menu a bit so you can see one two three so there are you've got quick access to three different preset modes there and if you go onto the main OSD itself um, it actually has com it has the same settings that you can activate but um, it sort of acts as its own different preset um, so I can change whatever I want in the main OSD um, but they'll only be associated with the game mode and once I disable the game mode all of this will go back to my uh, normal settings so it's, it's a little bit confusing to be honest um, really you can probably get by without using the game mode um, it might be useful if you do have three different presets and you like to quickly activate them though so I'm just going to disable the game mode. There we are, game mode off, that was very quick. Actually yes, the, uh, the monitor does actually sort of restart itself when you enable or disable game mode. Um, okay, so you can see that 1, 2, 3 have gone now, um, but instead we've got a little sort of overclocking icon here. That's actually for the OD, the overdrive mode. Um, the pixel response setting of the monitor which you can set to off, normal or extreme and that's explored in the review the second, uh, the next icon sorry, is a volume control, a little speaker icon and that controls the volume of the integrated DTS speakers of the monitor um, they're explored in the review as well, they're fairly powerful, quite decent for integrated monitor speakers actually um, maybe if you've got something connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack, you'll be controlling the volume of that instead. You can select the input used by the monitor. So of course there's DisplayPort or HDMI. And then there's the main OSD system. Now, I don't really find navigating through this quite as easy as some other systems, especially ones that have a little joystick or jog button. But um, it does have some good functionality in it. So you can see it's split into um, five different sections. And the first one is the picture section. This allows you to activate various different uh, settings. For example, there's Acer Colored Management, which is the basically the name that Acer give to their presets on this monitor. And there are various different settings here. And all they actually do is just they change the contrast and brightness really. They don't there are no settings specific to these which you can use on some but not others. Um, and again it's it's sort of like um the settings you'd associate with these aren't saved for the other um the other presets. So it's kind of giving you a bit more flexibility if you're one of those people who likes loads of different settings for different applications or something like that. But me, I prefer to just stick with the user or the standard setting and to just make my own customizations. You can also change the brightness, the contrast levels. There's a blue light setting um, or a low blue light setting and that's explored in the review as well. You can set that to various different levels. So 50% which gives you the maximum blue light reduction, 60%, 70% or 80% or, or you can disable that feature. Um, a little confusing actually, um, I'll come on to this in a little bit, there's another feature linked to this um, which is on the, the next menu and I'll come to that in a little bit and it can be a bit confusing because you can actually um, I've disabled blue light here, it's set to off, but sometimes it actually remains on. 
um, which isn't ideal and it's a bit confusing, but never mind. Dark Boost, I'll show you that shortly because, yeah, you can see I've done a turn blue light off, um, but on Color Temp on the next menu it's actually still on, which is a bit odd. So I'm just going to change that back to my user settings. Sorry about this uh, faffing on. It's um, something you'll grow to love if you own this monitor, having to faff on with the OSD when you want to do little things like that. So before I was really interrupted by the blue light settings, there was a dark boost I was going to talk about. And that's basically like BenQ's um, black equaliser. It's a sort of gamma enhancement, a low end shade enhancement feature, which artificially brightens dark shades. Um, and it's intended to reveal more details in dark areas and games and stuff like that. Um, I think this is probably best demonstrated if I open um, Lagom set of LCD test here, go on the black level test. Um, just remember that what you see on the, the video and on your own monitor isn't representative of what I'm actually seeing on this monitor exactly, but um, you'll still see that the overall nature of the changes that this dark boost setting does. So you can set that to three different levels and even level one brightens, you can see the uh, sort of mid uh, middle line there, sort of dark to mid shades, brighten a bit. Level 2, they brighten even more, and some on the top line becoming unusually bright as well. And um, level 3 brightens them even more. So yes, it does upset the image, it's, it's not one for people who like accurate colours, it's really just to give you a competitive advantage in games. There's an adaptive contrast, dynamic contrast feature, which is quite interesting. Um, not necessarily in a good way. I explore that in the review a bit. You can actually set that between 0 and 100, but it doesn't really seem to have much effect, to be honest. So, um, not something I'd, I wouldn't really use dynamic contrast on a, any monitor, so I'm just going to leave that there, I think. Next, there's this colour menu, which I briefly looked up before when I was faffing around with the blue light settings. You can set one of two different gamma modes, 1.8 and 2.2 and on my unit, um, according to my measurements, the 2.2 mode was uh, actually fine and that's the default and it was, as it says, 2.2 centrally. Um, colour temp, various different presets here. So there's cool, warm, blue light which uh, I've just talked about before and user. And If you select user and then click on the little enter icon thing, which is that. Um, you can manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. There's sRGB mode, and that doesn't do anything particularly special. All it actually does is it returns these uh, settings on the first two menu sections, the uh, colour and the picture menu, to the factory defaults. And if you so, okay, I'll, uh, I'll enable sRGB mode. So you can see the color temperature, warm, gamma 2.2, those are both default. Um, the picture settings, 80 brightness, 50 contrast. So, yeah, everything's at its default. And if you then manually adjust any of these, sRGB mode will simply turn off. Um, and it can be a bit annoying, actually, if you've sort of messed around with your own settings and haven't saved them as a preset um, it'll actually overwrite them which is quite annoying so not not exactly the most useful setting they might as well have just said reset color and picture settings as an option at the bottom that would have had the same effect and been a bit less confusing but never mind turn that off there's a saturation setting again 100 is the neutral value the best for sort of um, accurate shades, uh, the best shade variety. If you increase this you reduce the shade variety but some of the shades will become more saturated than they should be, so people like that. And Or you can reduce the saturation if you like things to look muted for some reason. 
six axis color so that gives you more flexibility over the color channels I didn't feel the need to actually adjust these at all myself um, my monitor was pretty nicely set up in that regard anyway next there's an OSD menu that has various settings such as language for the OSD timeout period which I've increased to 2 minutes 120 seconds just for the sake of this video refresh rate number so that'll display the current refresh rate so obviously if you're using G-Sync which is a key feature of this monitor it'll actually um, give you an indication of the FPS of your game you can enable a transparency effect on the OSD or increase or decrease that game mode which I've already talked about and presets so three different um, sort of user presets settings 1, setting 2 and setting 3 so you can set these up even when you're not in game mode and these will be different uh, settings I believe to the ones when you're actually in game mode but this is how you access them if you're, if you're not in game mode so there's not like a super quick way of accessing them there's an aim point on screen crosshair feature. Um, you can see there's icon 1, icon 2, icon 3. And I'll just show you them there. So there's icon 1, icon 2, icon 3. Sort of not the most inspiring designs, um, but sort of do the trick if you want an on screen crosshair. Next there's a setting menu and that has the input selection, DTS, which is the sort of um, uh, technology used by the speakers which is supposed to make sound a bit richer. OD, overdrive, which I've already covered. Ambient light, a feature I quite like actually. Um, you can see I've got a, I'm using a glossy desk at the moment so you can actually see this reflected quite neatly on the on the bottom. Um, you can see there, there's um, actually three LEDs and they're actually just on the underside of the, the monitor, the bottom bezel, the underside of that, under the Predator logo, facing downwards. And it sort of creates just a little sort of ambient lighting um, environment underneath the monitor. And there are various different settings associated with these. MNT status, um, I'm not sure exactly what that stands for, I think it's something like monitor NVIDIA technology or something like that. And what this does is when the monitor is in a running a fixed refresh rate, it just stays white like it is now. When it's running G-Sync, it goes red. And when it, you are using ULMB, ultra low motion blur, it goes yellow. But if you prefer, you can have it, it changes color based on the frame rate. Um, it doesn't change sort of intensity, it just has um, seemingly random colors associated with different refresh rate ranges. So just if you happen to memorize what those colors are, you can have a bit of an indication of what frame rate is being used or some bizarre thing like that. You can just have it nice red color, green. blue good old white orange share to be honest it's actually more of a yellow I don't know how it appears on the video but I would not call that orange and MNT status which I was using before so yeah I quite like this feature but I actually would have liked it to be more of a feature um, maybe some because there are only three LEDs there, they don't really do much uh, to, to light up the, the wall behind the monitor or anything like that. So, you can see on one of my other monitors, I've actually got a strip of red LEDs there. Um, I think they're, I can't actually remember what they're called, Antec, um, Antec Advanced Accent Lights, I think they are. And they actually sort of create a nice glow around the monitor. I quite like that. So. Uh, yeah, I would have liked. I quite like this feature, but I would have liked it to have been even more of a feature. And you can actually there are different effects. Um, you can make them sort of breathe. So you can see there 
brightening and dimming. You can make them flash. So brightening, brightening and dimming more rapidly. It's a ripple effect which can be fairly distracting to be honest. Um, sort of like a little disco going on beneath your monitor there. Or you can just have them fixed, so always on, which is my preferred setting. And you can also adjust the brightness, the five different brightness levels for the LED. Or LEDs, sorry. Wide mode. Now this is basically a scaling feature of the monitor, but Again, it's a little bit misleading because, because it's a G-Sync monitor, when you're using DisplayPort, it doesn't actually have um, sort of traditional scaler associated with DisplayPort. So it doesn't actually matter what you do here. And I know I'm running the native resolution here, but I'll just prove my point by changing that to a non-native resolution. So if I go back to that setting, The wide mode setting. You can see it's set to full, yet there are black borders. There's actually the, the, the um, image itself is displayed as a 27 inch uh, rectangle in the middle of the screen, um, and there are black borders when it should be stretched across the whole screen. It's being displayed with one to one pixel mapping here. So I can change that to Aspect, which shouldn't do anything, it should also display as it is now for this particular resolution, which is fine, or 1 to 1, which it's doing. Now the reason for that is, as, I, as I've said, um, being a G-Sync monitor, it doesn't actually have a scaler associated with DisplayPort, so it's always running at 2560 by 1080, the monitor itself, and it's actually the graphics card that has to handle the scaling rather than the monitor. That setting isn't just a completely useless addition, it's actually, it will do what it's supposed to do if you're using HDMI, because the monitor has a separate scaler for that, and it, it will use the monitor's scaling capabilities. But for DisplayPort, uh, G-Sync's used the G-Sync board, so you have to actually use the NVIDIA control panel settings to adjust the uh, scaling. So if I wanted to make it full screen I can do so here. And of course being um, because I've selected full HD full screen just stretches it out across the whole screen. It does look quite rubbish to be honest. Um, you lose clarity, everything's distorted, I don't know if you can see from the desktop icons, but they're stretched. Um, I mean, for some content you might be able to get away with this, but I think generally it's such a big monitor anyway, um, and it's got sort of fairly deep blacks, I reckon the borders either side is probably preferable for most users. So I'm just going to switch this back to the native resolution. 2560 by 1080. And then continue on. So next is what will be a very exciting feature for many people, overclock. And this is a thing that allows you to add refresh rates that are above the native 144 hertz of the panel itself. And I do explore these in some depth in the review and you know it, the monitor does not perform perfectly at um, well any refresh rate for that matter but certainly not at these higher refresh rates which you can add um, as overclocked ones. So you can add 160, 180 or 200 to the resolution list then when you click apply and reboot uh, the monitor will restart and you should see this 200 hertz or whatever you've selected in the resolution list. Next there's ULMB, ultra low motion blur. You'll see I can't actually select that at the moment. That's because I'm running at 144 hertz. 
and the feature is only available if you're running 85, 100 or 120 hertz. So I'll just quickly show you that feature again. It's explored in the review, um, particularly in the responsiveness section, because that's really what this uh, feature is all about. Sorry, the screen was actually running 60 hertz um, when I'd reset it um, doing game mode or something else. It had been reset to 60 hertz, but um, I have to select 85, 100, or 120. Um, the flickering will be ridiculous on the camera, probably. Um, yeah, you can see sort of black lines strobing down the screen. And if I wave my hand, you can see a very odd effect. Now, I can actually see that effect um, when I wave my hand, but I cannot see those black lines. I can, however, see uh, a f flickering um, effect. Um, which, again, I explore in the review, so do refer to that. I'm not going to go on about that anymore. So, once you've got ULMB enabled, there are a couple of, well, I think actually one option available to you to change. Um, and that is pulse width. And again, that's explored in the review. But basically, a higher value will give you higher brightness and will give you a longer on period for the strobe of the monitor. Whereas lower values decrease the length of the on period and increase the length of the off period so that the monitor appears dimmer, but motion is potentially even even clearer. Um, in terms of the perceived motion blur, I think most normal humans would find even at 100 um, ULMB is, is very good in that respect. Power LED, normal, dim, so if you find that a bit bright, that blue power LED can make it dimmer. Um, auto off, uh, I'm not entirely sure what that does to be honest, I'm guessing it uh, turns the power LED off when the monitor's been in standby for a while or something like that. I'm not, uh, not entirely sure, to be honest. I would have thought there was uh, an option to actually turn the LED off completely. That would make more sense, but it's still on, so... Oh well, never mind. You can make it dim if you don't like it. Or you can just cover it with uh, some sort of tape or whatever. There's a deep sleep setting. That's something related to uh, VESA. Um, well, it, it's really an Energy Star compliance feature. And it, most monitors will have this enabled by default because it does save energy and it's one of the requirements for a monitor to actually comply with certain Energy Star requirements. Um, and governments and other agencies like that kind of thing. Um, some individuals do as well, of course. Now. The only issue with this is, what it means is, um, the computer itself might go to sleep, and if the monitor's set to deep sleep, um, you might wake up your computer from sleep and find that the monitor actually doesn't spring back to life as you'd want it to. So disabling deep sleep can actually help the monitor resume when the, uh, when the computer resumes from sleep. Now I don't actually use sleep on my computer. I turn my computer off when I'm not using it uh, most of the time, or I just leave it on. So this isn't of any use at all to me, but if you do use sleep on your computer a lot, you might want to turn deep sleep off. There is also an option to reset everything to the factory defaults and power off USB charge. That means that when the monitor's power's off, or as in you've pressed the, the power button, um, and actually the power button has gone off now, so it must have just been a little time delay. Uh, power off does actually seem to turn the power button off, so there you go. So I'm sorry about the misinformation about that earlier. Anyway, power off, USB charge. If you've turned the monitor off with a power button, um, you can still use the USB ports on the, on the monitor, um, for example, to charge devices. Now, 
this does actually increase the standby power consumption slightly um, and also the monitor by standby that includes the monitor being off as if you've pressed the power button so it's up to you really it's uh, the features enabled by default does use a little bit more power I mean we're talking fractions of a watt here not really something to concern yourself about but uh, that's what that does anyway finally there's information and that shows you some basic um, sort of things about the, the monitor itself resolution input max refresh rate the mode so if it's in G-Sync normal fixed refresh rate uh, sorry, fixed refresh rate operating mode, or if it's using ULMB, and also if the game mode's on or off. So that's all there is to it. The OSD on screen display menu system of the Acer Z35 or Acer Predator Z35 if you prefer. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.